Hi everybody, again. <laughs> now the first thing I like to do in all my classes is to get people started right away and let them see how easy this is. I get them to mix paint and that takes up most of the time. We spend about 15 minutes mixing colors whereas I told you we put a little bit of acrylic paint, just a dab, like a dime to a quarter size. Then we add a little bit of water, say about a quarter inch, tap water. We mix them vigorously, carefully, to not splash it everywhere. And when we're in our local craft store where I teach, we cover the tables with paper or towels so that we don't get any paint on things. And as you can see, I work on a glass table, so I'm well protected and I'm not worried about something that I can't clean up. Even if I was working in my kitchen, like in the past, if I wiped it up immediately, it wasn't a problem. But this type of paint is permanent, so you don't want to work on carpet or on tile floors that have grout. My husband insists that I cover the floor, so I do. I lay out nice fabrics and tarps around the base of my table here so that the floor is protected. But anyway, that's about it. If you get it on your hands, you can wash your hands. It's not like dye that is permanent that is going to really sink into your skin. This is acrylic paint that if you go and you wash it off immediately, it comes right off. So let's get started. I'm going to show you how the easy t-shirt is done with the 123 Orchid. And this is how we do it. I use the bamboo brush, which holds a lot of water. That is why I love it. And I use water. When I'm teaching, normally I will tint the water slightly so people can see what they're doing on their blank white t-shirt, their blank white canvas. But this is how I begin. I know in my mind that I'm going to paint a design either vertically, straight across, horizontally, possibly diagonally, and I just have that idea in mind that it's going to be flowers or an abstract or whatever I decide. When you've been painting flowers, hundreds of them over and over and over, it comes naturally. But here, this is what I do. Now, I hold my t-shirt flat so the water doesn't run off. I'll tip it to show you, but really I like to keep it flat until I'm safe. So here I take my water and I go one, two, three. And as you can see, barely, the water will start to show up in a few moments. It has three sections of a flower. Now immediately I'm going to add paint to this. Watch. The pillow is absorbing some of the water and some t-shirts will absorb differently. Like As I said, some that have lycra or any type of synthetic, they won't absorb as fast. So be patient when you are using something that has any type of synthetic in it or any different weave. Let that water sit so it absorbs. Now I like to start with a light color dipped into a dark. So I have this really beautiful violet blue that, I'll take that hair off. I like to dip into a dark purple. Then this color is going to spread into the light color. Watch. One, two, three. You see how I started in the middle? That's my style. Everyone does it the opposite of me. <laughs> I find that is so funny because you'll see. You try it. I like my point to be in the middle and the what I call the rear end of the brush that's holding all the water towards the outside of my flower. So I start the point in the middle and then push down. Middle and push down and push down and push down. It's an exercise. Then back into the water for each section because the water is the magic. The water is what makes it so soft, so beautiful. People always ask me, is it airbrushed? And I have to say, no, it's hand painted with a bamboo brush. Again into my violet, my light blue violet my dark purple, my deep purple, and into the area where I have the water. One, two, three. Now you see, it begins to appear. 
Now next I'll do another section of my flower with a skinny brush and then I'll put another center into it with these what are called Lauhala brushes that are found in Hawaii under the pandanus tree which has been around since dinosaur times. They know that because of the pollen that has been found and then can identify the plant. But these are what ancient Hawaiians used to paint with. I'll soak them. They're the actual flower or the seed of the Lauhala tree. And they come off the, the tree very stiff. Anyway, I soak them in water to soften the bristles and I'll show you how we use that in a moment. With my skinny brush, I'll put water and a skinny stroke. One, two, three. I'm staying away from the center because I want to leave room for my yellow cup-like formation in the middle. Now I'm going to just take another color, say a fuchsia. I've mixed a lot of cool colors because they're my favorites and then a few hot colors. I'll do something orange, sometimes I'll do a lot of wild flowers in a, in a variety of colors. One, dip it back in the water, keep the wet look. Two, but now you see it's drippy so I don't want to tip it. I'll show you in a moment. And, oh, three, catch that drip. Give you a quick look. There, it's moving right along. Now, I'm going to take that Lauhella brush that I can dab on my paper. See how much water is it. Take a little water out, maybe it's too much. And one, two, three, just blot, blot, blot. And then into my, hmm, I'm going to use orange. Not my usual color, but that's nice. Usually I like yellow. There. And then the leaves. I work fast. Well, we'll fix that later, you see? You shouldn't have your other t-shirt right next to you. But I'll paint something over that. Again. Big leaf formation. Big brush. One. Two. Three. And a turquoise. Ooh, he's getting thick. Got to whip them up. Sometimes you'll add more water. If your paints have been sitting for about an hour, they can tend to get thicker. So you do like to test them on a piece of paper to see if it's the consistency that you like. I like it. Again, dipped in water. Sometimes there's still some in the brush, and I feel that I can use it like that. That's beautiful. Okay, so that's one flower. I'll usually complete one flower right away because I want to work fast before all the water blends. But I want to do another flower here, so here I go. One, two, Three, it's kind of a lumpy pillow, but it doesn't matter. See the water appearing there? Now I'm going to put it flat for my sake and make sure that your table is clean, no paint drips, so that you don't dirty the back of your shirt. And I will dip into the lilac, violet blue that is again, and the dark purple. And one, two, three. Sometimes I didn't get enough dark purple, so I'll dip again. Double dip. Carefully, I usually put my hand under it if I'm carrying over a shirt so that I don't spill everywhere. And there you can see, you can add back in if you like. See how it's spreading beautifully there though? Okay, the next section. Blue violet, dark purple. Sometimes I'll use a light blue and a deep indigo blue. Anything dark into light is gorgeous. Then, that one I'll add back into again. And this one, I'm dipping a little deeper. One, oh yeah. Sometimes it's too much. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. You fix them. It's a very spontaneous form of painting, and I think that's what I love about it. 
and I love water. It's relaxing. Okay.